Let's talk about absolute value in equations. So now we're looking at the absolute value of x is equal to 7. Take some time and watch the video on absolute values. So it makes things a little easier. Here, when you see absolute value, I want you always right away to draw two arrows. That way it reminds you that there's going to be two answers or two solutions. The first is going to be very similar to this equation, except we're going to lose the absolute value. So we're going to go ahead and write it as x is equal to 7. Okay? Or our second one is going to be, again, very similar. The difference is we're going to make the answer a negative or the opposite. So it's going to be x is equal to negative 7. Now, you can take some time and check it by plugging it in. So we say, if we plug a 7 in for x, we would get the absolute value of 7 should equal 7. Well, what's the absolute value of 7? We should have learned that absolute values are always positive. Therefore, that's a 7 equals 7. So that checks out. Let's try the other one. Now we plug in a negative 7 in for x. So we take the absolute value of negative 7 is equal to 7. And again, absolute value is always positive. Therefore, the absolute value of negative 7 should be 7 is equal to 7. And that also checks out. One thing I do want you guys to notice is this. If for some reason you ever have an absolute value equal a negative, right away I want to hear pew, pew. And those are the alarms in your head going off saying, there is no solutions to that. No solution. So you can never have an absolute value equal a negative number. But for now, when we're working with positives, remember, draw your two arrows. In this example, we actually have the absolute value of x plus 3 is equal to 5. I want you guys to remember this. Whenever we have the absolute value by itself on one side of the equation, we're ready to make our two arrows. What do I mean by that? Well, as long as you don't have anything outside the absolute value, meaning like a plus 3 or a minus 5, you're ready to break it up. Okay, so once we get our absolute value isolated, even if there's a letter with a number in there or a variable plus 3 or so on, you're ready to do your two arrows. So the first one is always the same thing without the absolute value, meaning x plus 3 is equal to 5, or our other arrow is telling us to write the same thing but making the equal, whatever is on the right side of the equation, the negative. So we do x plus 3 is equal to negative 5. I make that 5 a negative. All right. Now what we do is we solve both of our equations. So the first we do minus 3 to both sides, and we get x is equal to 2. And our second, we do the same thing minus 3, we see that our answer now is x is equal to negative 8. So therefore, our solutions are 2 and negative 8.